As we mentioned, the man you are looking at right there is Tim Zhu, son of the Hall of Famer Kostya, but blazing his own trail at 154 pounds. Tim, we are fired up that you are at this point in your career and you're taking the step to do it, to make that U.S. debut, but to make it big, to do it main event on Showtime against a very, very tough opponent in Terrell Gaucher. How much from your position have you heard the drum beat in the States that Tim Zhu, you know, it's time, and he's coming. He's coming on. Tim Zhu, you're coming on, brother. How, you know, how long in the making has this been for you? Because we've been wanting to know if you're for real or not, and it's time to find out. Yeah, well, look, it's, it's, it's been a few years in the making. Um, I've been waiting for this moment for, for quite a long time. Uh, we had plenty of um, COVID situations that we couldn't get through, but you know what? We're finally here, and I'm, I'm glad all this COVID stuff's slowly ending, and um, we're here to, to make noise, that's for sure. It's going to be Terrell Gaucher, as we mentioned. Just first off, look, you know his... Resume, you saw the knockout win against Jamonte Clark. He's he's out there. He's ready. This is a great test of where you're at. Where do you think Terrell Gaucher is at entering this fight? Yeah, look, he's a tough challenger, but I intend to just take it away from him, man. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Tim, Australia is in an interesting position right now in combat sports. There's you, obviously. Uh, Cambosis did incredible work against Teofimo Lopez on the UFC side. You got Volkanovski, Robert Whitaker on the on the across the, the water there in New Zealand. You got some great fighters as well. What is happening? Just say it, Adesanya. Just Adesanya, say it. Adesanya, yeah. But the point I'm trying to make is, all of, I'm not going to say all of a sudden because obviously this has been in the works for some time. But why are we seeing now this like burgeoning movement of really high level elite combat sports athletes, both in boxing and in MMA? From Australia. Yeah, yeah. look, we've got plenty of talent here. Uh, we're a small little island and we're away from everything, but um, we've got plenty of talent here. And, and it's all about uh, opportunities, you know, and, and we're just taking each opportunity uh, step by step. And I think um, we're going to make a lot of noise in the in the world scene soon. Okay, we mentioned, he mentioned you're taking on Terrell Gaucher, but do me a little bit more than that. Size him up for me. When you evaluate him as a competitor, what do you consider to be the main obstacles you have to solve? Oh, look, he's got he's got quick hands. Um, he's got a good good work rate, uh, good jab. Uh, his experience, uh, but I, I I have to be better in every single aspect to beat him. So, and I believe I've got all the tools that that's needed there. Tim, in terms of this debut and what it means for you in your career. Look, as fans uh, that, you know, we work for Showtime, we, you know, we're all connected in the same company. We're fired up that, that you're coming to this network that your dad had big success on. But this seems like you are going after, obviously, the biggest names possible who all seem to be under the PBC flag, whether it's Fox or Showtime on American television. Does this, how long does this, you know, how long does this put you in the mix here? I mean, are, are you a, a going to be a consistent U.S.-based fighter fighting on these networks uh, moving forward? Or is this sort of a one-off to test it? No, look, I think um, we've got a good relationship working with PBC Showtime. So, you know, I think there's plenty of, um, there's a, there's definitely a future ahead. And um, at the moment, I'm buzzing from all of this stuff, man, being in America and, and just having my, my first spa here in America uh, the other day was just, just incredible, you know. Um, it's pretty cool. And, you know, for me, it's like a new chapter and a, a new beginning. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be, be plenty more years ahead. Tim, you're in America right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Favorite thing about America? Least favorite thing about America? <laughs> it's hard to find good food here, man. Everything's so fattening. <laughs> and that could be a good thing as well. <laughs> yeah. That's a fair point. We are very fat. He's this definitely is a real... seen this show before, Luke. I <laughs> yes, can tell. Yes. I can tell now. That's for very sure. fair. That's very fair. And the coffee, man. You guys. I haven't got the best coffee. Yeah, you know what? I have heard, no, this is true. I have heard that Australian coffee, I've heard two things about Australian coffee. One, it's very good. Two, I've heard you guys have a culture of sitting down for coffee. Like it's a, like you don't just get coffee and go, you sit down together. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone always sits down for a coffee. Yeah, I hear they got strong shit down there in Melbourne. That's what I hear, okay? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Tim, look, <laughs> your dad's not your trainer. You're your own fighter, but you know, you and your brother grew up watching your dad be the man, be that, you know, be that bad guy at the end of the movie or video game and taking people out. What I respect about you the most in carving out your own path skills wise 
is you seem to have that glowing intangible early that this isn't like, you know, overly scary to you. Like you've lived this life already in a different form. You now stepping up on the brightest stage, coming to the US, all this pressure. You're like, dude, I, you know, as Paulie Malignaggi once famously said, I make love to pressure. You look like you're, you're about it. Like there's not a doubt in your mind. Is that just the advantage you get of growing up as the son of a Hall of Famer? Yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, there'd be a bit of experience there, of course, uh, growing up watching that. But um, at the end of the day, I've had um, nine pay-per-view fights in Australia. And, and pay-per-view means, you know, it's, it's quite a big show and fighting on stadiums. So nothing phases me, man. I'm just I'm just chilled and all I like to do is punch on. So <laughs> simple. Tim, what was – you obviously had no – you're you know, 20 fights deep in your career. You watched your father's career. I guess what I would ask is, having been this far along and watched what your father did – what would you say was the biggest lesson you took from his career? Not that you want to do the same thing, but it, it, it informed your judgment about how to pursue things. What, what lesson did you learn? Oh, that, that's sim uh, easy, man. Uh, simple. Um, discipline. Discipline. Uh, it taught me discipline and, um, you know, to, to always be at training session, no matter if you're sore or tired. Uh, uh, you got to work hard for, for all your goals, you know, and, and, that's what I. That's what I do. Uh, we're talking about your father's great career in moments that you either watch live or years, you know, watch the tape of. You know, the Zab Judah win obviously is going to be first in so many people's mind. But you know, for fans of Showtime history, your dad's final fight against Ricky Hatton was such a big deal and a great fight. It obviously didn't go uh, the way of your family. Is that fight ever talked about around the old man, or has he still got like PTSD with it? Uh, I think that fight doesn't get mentioned at all. <laughs> <laughs> what fight does get mentioned? What what one does he talk about? Which fight does he talk about? Yeah. I, I guess um, there's a few. There's the the Zab Judah, of course. Yep. Um, the Julio Cesar Chavez. You know, growing up watching my dad said watching him fighting an idol was was incredible and. Uh, he said his best performance was against uh, Gonzalez. Hmm. Uh, now, we, we just had uh, George Cambosis over here, and he did the amazing work, obviously. And, of course, that was a big debut for him in this market. This is going to be your big debut against Terrell Gaucher. Now, obviously, the best-case scenario is a win, a knockout, something like that. But I guess my question is, when you're done with that fight, what do you want American fans and media to say about you? What is a scenario that you want to look at when, when your hand gets raised? The bad guy. The bad, bad guy? Man. Why? <laughs> I just want to be the bad man, you know, that takes everyone out. Yeah, that, that could happen. Uh, there, the Luckily for you, us, you know, like I mentioned, all the big names at 154 seem to be under that PBC banner. And with the launch of this schedule, your fight against Gaucher, of course, March 26th, but Erickson Lubin against Fundora. And then we get Charlo Castaño, too, for all four title belts. That first fight was amazing, but I feel like, you, you know, if anyone deserved a decision, it was probably Castaño. Here we are back a second time. How do you handicap this? How t are these two the two best in the division besides yourself, in your opinion? Yeah, I think um, Castaño wins in my eyes. I think he, the work rate, um, Charlo likes to wait around and uh, yeah, he, he's got power in both hands and, and, that's, and that's what he relies on and he's got good boxing skills. Uh, but Castano's work rate, I think, um, wins the fight. Tim, what is your number one goal for 2022? Right To win this fight, it's first thing first, uh, March 26th, we get it. But again, for, by New Year's Eve, New Year's Day 2023, what has what should have happened by, by that point? And just, just keep punching heads in, and that's it. <laughs> Couldn't care less who it is. Just keep punching heads. I mean, you, do you have a working plan that if the if the opportunity for the winner of Castaño Charlo two falls in your lap, you take it? A hundred percent. I'll take anyone on, man. I was I was ready to to fight Charlo in, in, in three weeks' notice. You know, when uh, Castaño pulled out, I, I couldn't care less. I'll fight whoever, man. Honestly. Uh, let's close with this. Any anytime you're hailed as, you know, one of the next big things you're going to get, people just as quickly say, no, man, I see it. That guy ain't for real. He ain't the real. Why are you for real? What, what makes you different from this division, which is loaded of young guys, veteran guys? What is going to end up being the difference in you cutting through it and making 154 your mountaintop? 
Oh, I, I just have to, I know, I know for a fact uh, how I am as a fighter and I just have to prove it to everyone. Um, everyone's got a bit of skill, everyone's got a bit of heart. Uh, but you got to be the ultimate package. I believe uh, I've got that ultimate package against everyone because, you know, you got to be able to adapt in, in any situation. Ultimate package, Luke. I, I wish I, you know, wish I was on that level. Okay? You're not. I'm You're not. not. But this yeah. guy, but this guy's never. <laughs> he is. Yeah, this he guy. Is. I bet they're lining up for this guy. Tim Zhu, thank you for the time. I know our fans are going to be fired up. March 26th on One thing, Showtime. Tim, Tim, if we ever get you to New York City, we'll get you some good coffee here, I promise. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. That's, okay. <laughs> That's Tim Zhu. Thank Thanks, you boy. so much. Best of luck Thanks, to you. Thanks, Tim.